Thanks for, for having me today. I am currently working with the University of St. Andrews and the Museum, Galleries and Collection Institute, um, specifically on the European Union, Latin American and Caribbean project known as ULAC. So I just will jump into what exactly that project is, how it came about, and some of the history and what we're working on currently. So ULAC stands for European Union, Latin American and Caribbean Museums. And essentially what it is, is a research project that looks at bi-regional collaboration between these different communities. And as heritage professionals, we are all aware of the capacity museums have to reach all levels of community. So going from small towns and villages, um, at, you know, even up to cities, these spaces are able to be used um, for social cohesion, for an exchange of ideas in many different contexts. And so this project, the ULAC Museums Project, wants to look at how we can define the community museum. And so that's something that has definitely been a theme of this conference, um, even just this morning in this session, um, is how do we define what a community museum is. So what we're looking to do is use the research gained by um, this project to look at different types of community museology throughout Latin America, the Caribbean, and Europe, and exchange those ideas to create a definition of it. And these will then be fed into the new definition of um, a museum uh, that ICOM will look at in 2019. So um, really what we're looking at is the global stage, community museums on a global stage. And specifically, we want to focus on having um, equal representation from all of these, uh, these different communities, letting small rural museums in Costa Rica have the same voice as museums here in Scotland and Portugal as well. So a little bit more about the actual um, way that our project is, is, is planned out. There are, there's a plan of action that falls into four different legs. So the first one being technology and in innovation for bi-regional uh, integration. So that looks at uh, digitization, 3D museums, virtual museums, um, and that's done across these regions. The second is museums for social inclusion and cohesion. So um, that has to deal with our youth exchange, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit um, it, later on in this presentation. Um, we also, uh, our, our third leg is fostering sustainability for community museums. So talking about sustainability on a global level and how these museums can continue to function um, and drawing information and knowledge from, from other museums. And then finally, exhibiting migration and gender. So that's another part of the project that we're working on. And these do work um, across, across one another. So many of the different categories overlap, but um, it, it's, it's cut into to four sections. So the project has received funding from the European Union. It was actually conceived under the auspices of the ICOM 2014 uh, meeting. And it was sort of this brainchild of how can we put together different regions and get as much knowledge as possible, sharing that across on a global scale. And so it's actually part of the biggest ever research and innovation program funded by the EU. And it started last year in 2016, so we're a year in now, and it will last till 2020. So um, we're doing already a lot, and we're continuing to grow the project and continuing to develop more into research. And you know, just to try and understand better the cultural, scientific, and um, social dimension in, in a relationship between these regions. There are eight different international partners, and you can see here on the map, um, they're marked out. So uh, Scotland, Portugal, Spain, France, Peru, Costa Rica, Chile, the West Indies, and then um, it's based in the University of St. Andrews in the um, Museum Gallery and Collections Institute. So it's coordinated out of Scotland. Um, and then within these countries, there are various different community museums and universities that are involved in the project on a wider level. So um, it's, it's, it's formed of many different institutions and many different people able to put in um, their knowledge and their ideas into this to kind of create a cohesive, um, a cohesive program. So I just want to show you some of the museums that we've been working with, some of the eco museums. Um, I'm going to focus on open air museums in this presentation. So this one is in the Scotland district. It's the Springvale Eco Museum in Barbados. 
So um, eco museums are something that are very interesting, um, unique to work with in, in a heritage perspective. And so this is, uh, this is in the West Indies in Barbados. And there, it, there's part of this museum is um, interior. There is a structure as well, but um, working with it as an open air museum. This is another community museum. It's a house museum in Barbados. So again, a small museum. Um, however, it is in a, an urban center. So now we'll look at some of the Latin American museums. So this is in Costa Rica. Costa Rica has been a really, really great partner. They've been really um, eager to, to work on the project. Actually, both of my colleagues are currently in Costa Rica. The director of our program, Karen Brown, and our youth program administrator are both um, spending time in Costa Rica right now. Uh, so this is an image of the Baruca Community Museum and the Ray Curie Community Museum. Uh, the Ray Curie Museum is an open air uh, um, community museum, and um, the Baruca Museum is was actually part of uh, our digitization project as well. So Costa Rica, like I said, has been a really really strong partner with us, and they participated in our youth exchange. And so these community museums were essential in facilitating that exchange of young people from Europe to Costa Rica. And these are just some images um, of the museums and, and the sort of things that go on. So again, talking about the intangible heritage being important and local traditions and customs coming into the museum and using that as a space to preserve those traditions. So you can see here um, traditional dances and um, crafts. And then of course, um, uh, the natural environment being important. And this is an image from uh, the Youth Exchange, which I'll, I'll talk about a little bit more in a minute. And then this next, these next few slides will look at the Sky Eco Museum. Some of you might be familiar um, with the Sky Eco Museum and um, the Staffing Community Trust and what they do on the Isle of Skye. So basically, it's an outdoor museum that spans quite a, quite a big distance. And the idea is to understand the landscape and to understand the, the natural environment in relation to built heritage and community and identity. So this is just a, a, a visualization of where the museum um, is. So this is uh, the Staffing Beach and the Old Man of Store and the staff and township. So again, understanding um, people's place in the landscape as well. And then the exhibition signs. So these are the sort of things that are really important in exchanging. How do you display, how do you have um, you know, different displays and information conveyed in these outdoor museums and in these outdoor spaces? So that's something that's very useful for um, community museums in Scotland to learn from how they're doing it in Costa Rica and vice versa, and being able to share that knowledge with one another. These are actually two of the students who participated in the Youth Exchange. Um, they're from, they're, all the students are from the Isle of Skye, all of the Scottish students. So I'll talk a little bit now about the Bi-Regional Youth Exchange. Um, so it, it was a really, really exciting project and it's still ongoing. Um, so the way it worked is that 12 young people from the European Union were chosen um, to go to Costa Rica and spend a couple of weeks immersing themselves in culture, um, in Costa Rican culture. And there were 12 young people from Costa Rica who also went through the same sort of very, very rigorous process of applying for this. Um, they're all under 18, so they are all youths. Um, so they had to really have a, a, a very high understanding of what it means to um, you know, travel across to another country and understand a new culture and of course be respectful and able to absorb information from it. So this is just a visualization. So students from the Isle of Skye and students from a small village in Portugal traveled to Costa Rica and that was this past summer. 
And so before going to Costa Rica, the Portuguese and Scottish students and um, the Costa Rican students, before they had the visitors come to them, all participated in monthly workshops. So what these workshops aimed to do were to build confidence for the students in understanding their own heritage and in understanding um, their own identity, their communities, and the role of these institutions, these museums, in their communities. So their workshops consisted of kind of mind mapping different ideas and activities, um, talking about local traditions, talking to community elders, spending time learning about their own culture. Because oftentimes we don't realize what is unique to our own cultures. So they really had to spend time learning about that. Um, they also were able to you know, use this time to learn about the culture that they would be visiting. So the uh, Scottish students and Portuguese students learned a little bit about Costa Rica before visiting. And then when they weren't having um, their workshops, they were encouraged to go to community museums, spend time in these institutions, spend time um, with people in their community, elders in their community, learning more about their own, their own um, customs. And um, they, do, they do keep blogs, so I've linked the website at the very end of this presentation. So definitely take a look at our website and you'll be able to find the blog posts because it's really, really incredible to see what some of these students have written um, and how they've synthesized the information. So these are some images of the Scottish students who participated. Um, so these are some of the workshops they did. Our, our youth program coordinator, Jamie, there in the middle, he traveled to Sky several times to facilitate these workshops with the students to make sure that they were understanding exactly what they were supposed to do, um, understanding um, you know, what they were to bring. And so the main language of this project is English, but students are encouraged to bring along their traditional languages and their, um, their home languages. So the, all of the students that participated from Scotland were bilingual in uh, Gaelic and English. So that was something that was really interesting and important to see was the exchange of language as well. So here we can see these are some of the Portuguese students. Again, they are practicing some of their local crafts, um, mapping out how their communities work and you know spending time getting to know one with uh, know one another was also very important for the students. And these are the group of Costa Rican students. So again, before they had uh, visitors from Europe come over, they spent time uh, in monthly workshops as well, uh, understanding their own culture, understanding Baruca culture. Uh, they're from uh, an inland village in Costa Rica. And uh, Baruca, they have their own language, an indigenous language called Baruca. So again, being able to, to bring that indigenous um, language and, and skills to one another. So here are some images of the actual exchange itself. So these are some of the students from Scotland, Portugal, and Costa Rica all um, spending time together. So they were able to participate uh, in the community kind of on a wider scale. They met with local government. They learned from different people in the community, community elders. Um, they spent time in these museums. So this is the um, Community Museum of Baruca. Um, and they spent a lot of time there. Also a lot of time in the uh, natural environment. And so this is uh, them coming together, working uh, with all the three of the different groups of students working together to talk about their experience in Baruca and San Vicente. Um, so you can see there uh, up in the top corner their exchange in language. So talking about the same things but, but translating it across languages. And so this again, this is some of the students spending time with community elders, people who um, are do traditional crafts, traditional artisans, so learning some weaving techniques. The masks there are called um, diablitos, so little devils, little devil masks, and they are traditionally made by the Baruca people, and they are to keep away the evil spirits. So that's something that's very integral to Barucan culture and something that was important for the students to understand and to kind of participate in. So again, some of the students crafting, learning about traditional uh, Barucan crafts. 
And then, of course, participating in festivals. So music, dance, festivals are really, really important in understanding another culture. And so the museums in Costa Rica were able to facilitate some of these festivals and some of these um, allowing students to, to see what traditional Baruchan music, see what traditional um, um, dance and festivals are like. Again, and it's a really good way for, for young people to get engaged and to kind of loosen up when they, when they are participating in something that's fun, like, like you know, a festival, a party. So uh, while they were in Costa Rica, the students participated in various different workshops. So um, this one is drawing the tree of the community. So the students were tasked with mapping out what their community looks like, uh, what's important in their community, and then they discuss this on, um, you know, with the other students from the other countries and communities. And so that was a really good chance for the students to understand the similarities between communities, um, but also to understand differences and to kind of appreciate those and, and to take it in a very um, informed manner. So again, sharing dance and music. So um, the Costa Rican students had traditional um, music that they wanted to share and dance. Um, Portuguese students as well, they um, brought along traditional musical instruments and, and, and put on traditional dance. And then the Scottish students um, did a K-lead and brought along bagpipes. So they really got to share their, their traditions. And that, I think that was a lot of fun for them because um, it's a more casual way of understanding uh, other people's communities. And then the students also got to participate on the community radio to talk about what they were doing, how they were enjoying it, what they were gaining from it. So students from all three, um, Costa Rica, uh, Portugal, and Scotland. And then again, they were tasked with, it was a lot of visualizations with this. So again, drawing out your community, what's important in your community. Um, so this is a, a student from Scotland, and she's um, drawing comparisons between her Scottish community and San Vicente. And that was the, that was the last day. So that's the program director there um, in the corner. That's uh, Karen Brown. She's facilitating it. She's living in Costa Rica now. But um, this was the last day, and the students had really um, gotten to know one another, had enjoyed the experience. And um, the next leg of the project will be the Costa Rican students coming to um, Scotland. Six will come to Scotland, and six will go to Portugal. So it's another exchange. And they will be coming in June, I believe, of this summer. So uh, this is a project that is ongoing and is continuing to evolve. And they're continuing the monthly workshops, continually, continuing to build on that. Um, yeah. So uh, I'm happy to answer any questions at the end of the session. And please do send us an email if you have any questions about how the project is working. And please look at our website, because there's loads of information about the youth exchange, the blog posts, which really I encourage you to look at, and some of the information on the virtual museums and digitization that we've been working on.